Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike from Infinity Roofing. How are y'all? Um, this is take two of our training series. There's gonna be many more to come. Um, just a quick refresher as to why we're doing these. It's to help you guys, the reps, the new people, the experienced people, refresh their skills. Um, as mentors, we wanna help the people that we're mentoring. And as, as reps out in the field, um, we just wanna make ourselves more familiar with how to be more efficient um, and uh, learn new things every day. So a challenge, any of you guys have any questions, um, please text them to me. Um, I'll turn them into a quick video, I'll answer them and I'll still get a hold of you. But that way we have some of these training things a little bit more available to us. So today's topic is gonna to be checklist for submitting a job for approval. And I apologize, I'm in my truck. Um, so I have a small glare. Um, we're gonna do the job Nimbus aspect of this in a separate training video, but today I wanna talk about just making sure you have your paperwork right, what you need to have filled out, and then that way when you leave that house, you've got everything pretty much wrapped up that you can scan it all in right there from the truck or from your car and then move on to knocking the neighbor's doors and showing them that you just signed up the neighbors so you pick up some more deals. So number one is when we're sitting down with our homeowner, we wanna let them know, hey, we wanna go over your insurance scope and make sure that you guys have got things like recoverable depreciation, not non-recoverable. We also wanna look at the scope so we have an understanding of what we're kinda contract to do and what we're not contracting to do. Um, an example of that would be, let's say we're doing roof only, which would be great, um, and uh, it looks like they didn't pay for the back patio, or we think they have 40 squares of roofing and the adjuster says, well, they've only got 20. So, you know, things like that may indicate, you know, we have a problem. We need to figure this stuff out before we turn it in. In the event that things look good, it's a roof only, it's 40 squares. Our Eagle View says 40 squares. Um, it just kind of reassures us that, that everything's good. We also want to check on insurance scope. Handlebars, greater than, less than sign, are a bad thing in roofing. They mean non-recoverable depreciation. We don't like the word non in front of recoverable. However, parentheses are a good thing. It means that the depreciation is recoverable and that we can get it when the job's done. If we see some of those things, you can, you know, we may even have another video about that um, to help you guys on how to turn those into a different type of contract. Um, the, the second thing we do is that when we, when we are at the house, we need to um, get a copy of all the pages of the contract. So whether you use a CanScan app or whatever you're using on your phone or whether you're actually having them give you copies, all pages, one through 10, one through 14, don't skip any pages, let's get them all in there. It helps the team in the office bill your jobs out quicker and more efficiently. Um, the third thing is just going over the contract with the homeowner, making sure that your name's printed on the bottom and your phone number's on there, making sure that they're out of pocket, making sure that their upgrades are correct, their downgrades are correct, if there is any, um, the deductible's right, and then everything's been written legible so that when we go to order the roof at the office, we can read it and it helps us get it done quicker. Um, their names, their phone numbers, their billing addresses, an email, two or three phone numbers, maybe where they work, all that stuff's good info to put on the contract, just as something for us to be more familiar with that customer. Um, the fourth thing that I get um, from a customer while I'm still in their house is, is kind of the last thing I get is I say, hey, by the way, when we do your roof job, you know, it can be messy, even though you're, you know, you're probably gonna find about this many nails, you shouldn't find a whole bucket, but just be prepared. It's a bad day to park your car in the driveway. It's a bad day to let your kids run around the backyard when we're ripping off your roof and putting a new one on. So we wanna make them aware of some of the, the the problems that can happen with the root job and we want to have them sign that insurance form for us for my personal insurance that they understand the roofing information guide so again that's one of the last things I do. Um, the other form that I fill out, usually while I'm at the house, but it doesn't have anything to do with the homeowner, is the simple map form and the simple billing information sheet. We'll take some more time to go over these things all one-on-one -on -one in some following videos, but the map form can reflect the eagle view or me jumping up there and measuring it. If there's lines that we're not doing, for example, let's say they don't have ridge vent, I'm putting a dash through it and moving on through it. Um, ideally in our training book, you'll see on page 25 through 28, there's gonna be some map forms that were filled out correctly and some map forms that were filled out incorrectly. Um, one of the other things that we have is our billing information sheet. We added that thing just a couple years ago. It's been great because it allows us to expedite the billing process and get with the office without actually having to call them and say, okay, we want a supplement, we don't want a supplement. Um, this job's gonna get ONP, this job's not. What work are we doing off the scope and what work are we not doing because we never want to have anybody billing for any kind of work that we're not performing and we don't want to make those mistakes um, because uh, 
you know, we look at that very seriously. Um, so when we're filling out the map form and the billing information sheet, doing all that's great. Um, you know, is there multiple layers of the roof? Is there wood shake underneath the roof? All those things can be indicated on the map form. And if we're doing it right there after we're done talking to the customer and we're like, wait a sec, this could be a redeck. Wow, it's kind of wavy. Let me run back up there and jump in their attic and take a picture of that and make sure they're not space decking. Or wow, this thing may look like two layers. It looks kind of thick. Let's run back up there and take some pictures. And then that way we have those to put into our Nimbus and to have the office staff help us document some of that and get that over. Um, if we do have pre-supplements pending and whatnot, meaning, hey, they paid for half the roof, we can't turn in a roof job if they didn't pay for the whole roof, right? Um, we can't turn in a, a full roof job if they only paid for repairs on the roof job. So it's really good to make sure that we have our pre-supplements not pending anymore at that point. Um, another example of that would be, you know, let's say that, um, you know, somebody has a tile roof and their insurance company only paid seven or $800 a square, which is really, really low for tile. They should be between that 1400 and 2000 a square um, on, on standard tiles and even greater on uh, specialty tiles, all the way up to six, 7,000 a square for some of the imports. And um, if they're not paying for those right up front, you wanna get with your mentor, you wanna get with one of our uh, experts, uh, roof experts that's been through the tile process or flat roof process, and we wanna get those things pre-supplemented in the event that they're just way off. Um, and a lot of that's just giving the customer the bid and explaining to them, hey, um, you know, uh, this is this is what it costs us to do it and then that homeowner can turn in some of that for us um, as, as, as we're their roof expert and um, and then go from there um, one other thing to cover real quick on this video is the mortgage release form um, and the reason that this is important is when we're out there with the customer obviously they've got a check and 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 we don't take payments up front um, to do the work on their house However, when we are leaving, it's good to say, hey guys, did you guys get your first check from your insurance company? Can we look at that thing and make sure that Chase Bank's not on there, or Bank of America, or some bank? And then when we do look at it, we say, is this your current mortgage company? Because more often than not, um, the insurance company has an old mortgage company, another mortgage company purchased that, and then it takes even longer to, to draw out this process. So let's ask the customer to see it. In the event that the bank's on there and it's a big check, over 10 grand, they can't walk into their branch and typically get that signed. So we say, hey guy, I'm gonna run out to my truck, get this mortgage release form, you guys fill this stuff out, and then turn that check in to the office next time you're there or mail it into our corporate, uh, support center and that way we can get that process rolling and it, and and the homeowner will appreciate it because they probably haven't been through it before so again just think about your mortgage release forms which is going to be you know the last thing down at the bottom the secret to turning in jobs is when you look at this form you check off these these things over here on your list once you've been doing it for a while anybody would agree with me the jobs that get built build and paid in full the fastest were turned in clean crisp good handwriting X's if there's nothing there, dashes, and, and the contracts and the insurance scopes and all the documents were there. When we're missing things, it takes us longer to figure it out. So anyway, um, go out, sell a bunch of deals. Hopefully this uh, longer training video helps some of you guys out today. And uh, again, look for the checklist for submittal for the job approved into Job Nimbus. And hopefully a couple of those things help, uh, help you guys out. We'll talk to you guys in take three on the next training video. Cheers and thank you.